and welcome to Seven Grand. I'm your host, Josh Judd. Tonight we'll be discussing bottom shelf bottles at a bargain price and three of my Desert Island whiskeys, which we'll explain later. I would like to thank everybody for tuning in. As you can see, I am in the bar right now doing a little cleanup after two and a half months of dust has settled in. Chad is going to explain some tips and tricks to picking out a bargain bottle. Chad, show us what you got. Hi everybody, Josh and I thought it'd be a great idea to go check out some of the best bargain bottles we could find at our local grocery store or liquor store. What we found is that there tends to be a few tiers of whiskey, so we grabbed what we thought were some of the best representations of that. The first bottle that we bought, it's called Canadian Crest, came in at $5 a bottle. Canadian whiskey is always going to be the cheapest bottles that you can find, as the rules in Canada are a little bit different than they are in the United States, and they will add some things that we wouldn't consider whiskey into these bottles. The second bottle that we grabbed is Samuel Grant's Kentucky Straight Bourbon. I actually never heard of this whiskey before until I saw it at a grocery store shelf. And the fact that it says Kentucky Straight, pay attention to the straight on this label, tells me that this is probably our best bet for a good whiskey coming in at any price point, and thankfully this one's less than $10. The third bottle, the most expensive one, is Bird Dog Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This one's the gamble, the absolute wild card. Uh, because it says Kentucky Bourbon and doesn't include the word straight, we have no idea what this is going to taste like other than Kentucky-ish. Um, very much looking forward to the blind taste that we're about to do with Josh. So let's go see what he has to say. All right, well we have our whiskeys from Chad. Let's see if these whiskeys taste any good and if I can figure out which whiskey's which. Whiskey number one. That does not smell good at all. <coughs> okay, let's try whiskey number two, shall we? Mm, much better. Lots of traditional bourbon notes. Caramels, vanilla, sugars. Not the best whiskey I've ever had, but passable. Let's try whiskey number three. Not much of a nose. Touch of sweetness. All right. So, if I had to guess which whiskey was which, I would guess whiskey number one is the Canadian Crest. Yeah, I don't really know what that whiskey would be good for other than being $5 a bottle. Our whiskey number two, I'm gonna guess, is the Samuel Grant. Kind of smells like a nicely aged bourbon and not terrible. And I believe this whiskey was only $15, which is pretty bang for your buck. I mean, I think this whiskey would go great in an old fashioned, maybe on ice on a sunny day with some soda water. And whiskey number three, I'm gonna guess, is the Bird Dog. This whiskey smells like nothing and tastes like nothing and is 80 proof. And at $20 a bottle, yeah, maybe it's passable. Mm, mm, mm. So there you have it. Three whiskeys at $20, $10, or $15 and a whiskey for $5. I honestly never even thought I would see a whiskey for $5 that came in a glass bottle, but we found one. Don't know if I'd recommend buying that unless you're really trying to pinch pennies. But there you have it. You can find some drinkable whiskeys for pretty cheap if you're looking. So, you're probably wondering what a Desert Island whiskey is. Here at Seven Grand, we like to play games when we get slow. One of my all-time favorite games is Desert Island Whiskeys. So if you were stranded on a desert island and you only had three whiskeys to choose from, what would those whiskeys be and why? And here are my pick. E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, Glenn Farkless 17-year, and Yamazaki 18-year-old. E.H. Taylor is made by the Buffalo Taste Trace Distillery and they release a few different whiskeys. They have a small batch bourbon, a single barrel bourbon, 
and a straight rye, as well as a limited edition whiskey that comes out once a year. That is a must have if you're a collector. This particular bottle is the Barrel Proof. I love the Barrel Proof because it's robust, aggressive, really kicks you in the teeth. Another reason I like this whiskey is because it's 128 proof. And at 128 proof, you can cut it with a little bit of water, stretch that bottle out a little bit longer, depending on your strandedness on that island. As well as being 128 proof, this whiskey is flammable. So if you're having trouble starting a fire, this whiskey's really gonna come in handy getting that fire started. Second whiskey is the Glen Farkless 17 year old. 17 year old. The reason I chose this whiskey is it is the first scotch I ever had that really blew my mind. When I was first getting in the whiskey game, I loved bourbons, I loved rye, really wasn't into scotch that much. This whiskey, being from the Highlands and finished in sherry, gives you a sweet finish, but also has those malty and rich characteristics that you love in a scotch. Last but not least is Yamazaki 18 year old. One of my all time favorite whiskeys. An 18 year old Japanese whiskey, lots of sherry notes, really robust. If you ever get a chance to try it, I highly recommend it. Funny story about this whiskey is about eight years ago, I was in a liquor store scrounging for bottles and I sell this bottle for $130, which at the time I thought was a crazy amount of money to spend on a bottle of whiskey. Recently I was in a liquor store looking for some hidden gems and came across a bottle of Yamazaki 18 year and was so excited to see it until I saw the price tag, which was $1,200. I obviously did not buy that bottle. Well, that's our show. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a great time and learned some tips or tricks to picking out your next bottle of whiskey. We got to check out three bargain bottles, which are definitely a bargain, and three of my all-time favorite whiskeys that I would choose if I was straight on a desert island to drink, which are definitely not bargains if you see them in a grocery store. Seven Grand is still closed at the moment, and we are very much looking forward to reopening if you have any comments, suggestions, or ideas that you would like to see us implement when we do reopen, we would love to hear what you have to say. Please leave those in our comment section below. And as always, it was great to share some whiskey with you, and I hope you guys had a great time. Have a good night, and we look forward to seeing you next week.